Hello, Pip. I'm doing a sound check. Now you can make your noise if you like. <laughs> I'm also here. I don't have a noise beyond my voice. Hello and welcome to Ep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 285 of the Crate and Crowbar. It is the 12th of June 2019. My name is Chris Thurston and joining me this evening, Tom Francis. Hello. And Pip War. Hello. Hi, Pip. Hi. Welcome back. The, um, the date is divisible by three. It is. Mm. It is. Cool. And do you know what else involves the number three? <laughs> three? Yes. <laughs> Hard to deny. Oh, but, no, yes, but, E3, yeah. sorry. I didn't know what that segue You're one was. one letter off. <laughs> Electric 3. <laughs> it's still happening. Yeah. I mean that both in a kind of year-by-year, decade-by-decade sense, and also presently. Yeah. It's still happening at the time we're recording this. I always forget this. that, that there's a whole E3 after the E3 bits that we watch at home. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, people are there right now having doing interviews and playing games and that kind of thing but it seems unlikely that any more news is going to come out probably maybe so we can talk about what has been so really if you're out there why not just go to the backstreet boys exhibition down the road instead (laughs) indeed it's on at the grammy museum i think by the time this podcast goes up this um that tip might be too late to save a journalist but you tried i did try (laughs) yes um yes so this part is gonna be slightly different to normal in that um because essentially none of us have played something uh, this week that we can super talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we might, you know, give some impressions of things. We're going to spend a bit of time on E3 stuff and then some questions to wrap up. So it might be a slightly shorter pod than usual. But yeah, it, there's been quite like, I sort of, I think I wrote off E3 as a thing because I'm not in media anymore. So it's quite <laughs> nice to be able to sort of not think about it. But actually, it did happen. <laughs> despite everyone's expectations have you ever been i have never been no i it's... did go one year uh, i think it was 2005 and it was extremely hectic um i went i attended the microsoft you know conference mm. um but none of the others and that was terrible um and i might have kicked peter molyneux in the shin <laughs> <laughs> Like when, when trying to squeeze by to my seat. Oh. <laughs> you got Larry. <laughs> like what? <laughs> um, and it was a year, it was, uh, this will not narrow it down, but it was a year where Microsoft was saying, gamers want everything to be connected and everyone wants their experience on their phone and on their TV and on their Xbox and on their PC and it'll all be connected and a beautiful fusion and everything was, everything had a second screen experience. And, uh, that did not really happen or every time anyone tried to do anything about that everyone hated it <laughs> but they kept talking about it for another like five years and 14 years later <laughs> people at least figured out how to get the uh show itself um i saw bioshock supreme commander and spore hmm. which were all fucking blew my mind like all three of those are just like oh my god i can't believe what i just seen i was there in 2014 15 Six, I don't remember. It was one of the teens. <laughs> Were they talking about how everything's interconnected? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it was the year that they dropped the Shenmue trailer in the mm. Sony announcement. Mm. And Sean Murray sort of just went to a planet in No Man's Sky and <laughs> then the put first? the controller down and wandered off. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't the first outing for Normansky. Um, and... It was the year that the Taylor Swift exhibition was on at the Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> For many people, that won't narrow it down. And um, what else happened? Oh, they released Fallout 76 in the middle of Bethesda's conference. Oh, uh, right, yeah. It was that That one. feels really recent, wasn't it? That was really Are you sure it wasn't Fallout 4? No, I mean the other one, Shelter. Shelter, mm. That's yeah. That's it. Mm. Right, yeah, that was... <laughs> the mobile yeah. one. Yeah. I yeah. just, yeah... <laughs> I didn't know, I knew it was a fallout and then I stopped listening to myself by the time I finished saying the name of it. Yeah. Not good. Um I can't remember what I did though. Like <laughs> I mean <laughs> Was that the year they announced Battlefront 1 again? Oh, hang on. 
Is that the Spout one that food. smelled like yogurt? Yes, it was, because you went to it. Yeah, that's why I remember it. So you went to an, an Ice Planet Hoth themed demo oh, for yeah. Star Wars Battlefront 1 and it smelled like yogurt. Yeah, and then there was the thing in the Ubisoft room where they said you couldn't ride llamas, and I don't even remember what game that was. I think there might have been a narco state, but I don't. It's Ghost Recon Tom Clancy, Wildlands? Maybe. Yeah, like oh, Wildlands. yeah, probably that. <laughs> that's set in Bolivia, I think. Yeah. Did you try and, did you ask them if you can ride the llamas in Ghost Recon? They told me before I even started. (laughs) I was like, why are you starting with a negative? Like, what is this? (laughs) Why are we doing this? Do you think they've been getting that all day or something? I honestly don't know. If you're including it in the briefing though, like, it's maybe not a good, you know, like, if everyone's asking. You cannot ride the llama from Peru to Destiny Planet. happened as well. Uh, Destiny 2 was announced, maybe? No. You can't pet the dogs in the new Watch Dogs, by the way. They've announced that. Just for, what? The spirit is starting with a negative. That's already <laughs> come not? up. They've already confirmed you can't... Uh, sorry, no. It's not that you can't pet them. There, there aren't any. Oh. No, so you can't. Dogs. <laughs> but, so because, why is it called Watch Dogs? Uh, <laughs> I think it's a figurative. <laughs> Well, that seems like full How much advertising. attention have you paid to this series so far? <laughs> I don't, well, none. Um, but I don't, that should, I'm going to report that. What it to is, the is, <laughs> to the watchdogs. <laughs> in the dystopian internet cyber phone future of watchdogs. And where everyone's connected, where everyone's as connected. Microsoft yeah, yeah. wants. Microsoft's vision came um, true, but. For most people, it's a bit like how, you know, like, yeah, those stories of, like, kids during the Blitz that saw grass and cows for the first time when they were shipped out of the cities to mm. be evacuated it's a bit like that no one's actually seen a dog everyone only has to watch dogs on their phone and that's <laughs> like that's the only way they know what they are um it's the only way they can engage with them and that's why it's called watch dogs nice yeah, i see what you did true. there i didn't do anything uh they did that you were so who are the watch dogs in that game um it's the surveillance state isn't it isn't it yeah it's big brother man it's but- McCall. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's not Davina McCall anymore, is it? It's Emma Willis. I, I haven't watched Big Brother in 15 years. Okay, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we should probably start off by talking about Watch Dogs, actually, because I have no particular order in which we could talk about games. Yep. But, so this was, we, we joked about it a bit last week. Who watches the Watch Dogs? Um, I guess we just did, because we watched the trailer. Lots of um, um So this is um, the game we talked about last week, which is the post the one they said was set in post brexit britain uh it still feels like um i think it's i think it's the trailer we didn't watch so where's the demo and then there's a shorter trailer and the, the the other trailer starts with like quite a bad british accent yeah um saying like london is a shit hole now it sounds like someone's really watched a lot of danny dyer yeah it's gonna it's, or like it, ross yeah. kemp on gangs well actually like that trailer that initial trailer is very much like it feels like almost like a weird pastiche of like sort of British things like, and in a very, in very specific ways, like the character, when it reveals all the characters you can give a Bluetooth headset to and therefore recruit, recruit into the resistance. It's like the first one is like Idris Elba as Luther pretty much. And then the second one is not British, but Elizabeth Salem, blah, 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 blah. Um, from, um, ah, fuck mm, it. I know who you mean, but I don't the know how to pronounce it. Dragon with the girl on yeah. its <laughs> back. Dragon with the girl on its back. That's Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> Daenerys Targaryen. Um, <laughs> the Queen. And uh, some other people. Is the Queen doing a Daddy Dyer accent? Yeah, the, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's... Sack the... off, Charles! <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, your Daddy Dyer impression with... is fucking spot on. My problem with the accent is that it's a it's trying to do a Cockney thing, but every time it comes to an O, it does it the posh way. Oh, right. okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's John. <laughs> yeah. Why is it? So I don't know if it's profoundly uncomfortable to see British stuff in a game like this because it's been done poorly or because it is British. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is it possible to get this right? Because no one ever does. I don't know. Is it like, but is it like when you go on holiday and you hear other British people and you cringe? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe, like, maybe that's a sign that they've got it right. But then again, I don't know because I was watching that thing with you and going, well, they've got the exits for the underground in the wrong place on Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> like a jerk. <laughs> I think I was hoping for a bit more like Attack the Block era slang yeah, and stuff, right. like a bit more modern London. 
Like, not that that is probably up to date at this point, but <laughs> no, there's at a least big... a bit further ahead of than the Cockney mm. stereotype, which is <laughs> kind of old. It feels like they've. It's sort of based on like old TV shows, not mm-hmm. current. Like being in London, I guess it's it's just something know. slightly off about it, and and it's it's weird because like I imagine you could probably say this for most cities that then get sort of stuck in a game, you know, mm. one way or another. But whenever I'm in New York, the real place. Uh, there's always a moment where something extremely New York happens and it's weirdly like, why is this so much like films? <laughs> like, and I appreciate that she said that isn't true for the, the breadth of a massive place, but there is always a moment where it feels very, maybe that happens in London, I just don't see it. But yeah, I, there's some sort of weird uncanny valley Britishness. Like you have to see the black cab and the big red bus and like, I don't know, like every pub is right underneath Big Ben. Like there's some, you know, maybe that's just trailer stuff, but I did immediately get a sort of slightly bristly sort of. Mm. Yeah, it would be interesting to actually be walking around it as an open world because that's one advantage of open worlds is they don't do the movie thing of everything as a landmark. And I mean, obviously they include all the landmarks and it will be a compressed version of London, but you do get to kind of like breathe in the space and just get to know it's like yeah. back alleys and places that aren't significant and that can make it feel more real. Do you think you're going to be able to press a button on your phone to make the London Eye spin real fast? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be hackable. Yeah, it's going to be. Or- It'll be a story mission. Mm. So th- we should mention the what we knew last week was that you could play as any NPC, or at least that was the rumor. Yeah. And I have to say, my, uh, you know, I believe that was probably true, but I didn't really see, wasn't mega excited about that. It didn't make much sense in my head um, because there's this like core sort of contradiction with that, which is like. Um, but what about the story? What about the cutscenes? And they're not going to not do those. And if you can play as anybody, then surely that can't work. And I was just, I was expecting that there would be a main character, but you can possess people, like not, not in a yeah. spiritual sense, <laughs> but, uh, just <laughs> switch characters the way you can in like Metal Gear Solid 5, because that, mm-hmm. that's a game where it has a very, it's very focused on its protagonist, but for some reason you can also just play as anybody. Um, and it doesn't narratively try and explain it at all. <laughs> the cutscenes in that. Uh, there are some where you just, you're playing as this other character, but everyone calls you boss. Um, or, you know, refers to you as whatever the many names of big boss punished venom apad snake is. Yeah. Um, and then there are some cutscenes where, uh, you just turn into boss. Like you just, you see boss instead of your character. And then there are others where you can't do the cutscene. You have to go and get boss and <laughs> come back as boss to do them. So they're just like every approach ever. But this, it's a lot more ambitious than I thought it was going to be because it's, there is no main character. Uh, you really can play as anybody. Um, and they say, it's kind of frustrating because they've just sort of said, and it's all voice acted and you, there are story cutscenes and just whoever you're playing as, that's who you'll, you, you'll see. And it's like, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> unless you caveat that. I just want to hear what, what the caveat is. Like, I'm up for this. I'm sure that's good, but just tell me how, ha- like, that's not possible. So what are you doing really? And what they are doing really, it turns out, I read in Sam's preview, um, for PC Gamer is there's 20 personas that that people can have basically like voice acting i from the way they said it it's like oh it's it's not quite that simple it's it's a complex system but there are sort of 20 personas and i think that doesn't mean it's 20 different voice actors i think it's probably like 10 or five mm. but different performances as well because it's like the same voice actor with different per- personalities i would imagine um maybe different variants on the cockney accent um but the, like, the cool thing about it is that it's permadeath with those characters. And those characters are people with, like, unique traits. And when you play as them, you level them up and choose new perks for them. So you kind of get invested in them. And then if they die, they're dead. And you just play as someone else in your crew. And that part actually sounds really cool. Mm. That's the part that I find slightly even more unbelievable, <laughs> though. Like, it's not just how do you voice everybody. It's like, in the demo... Like the first character does get killed, and then later on there are several references to that. Like, yeah, like I can see how you know I uh, I agree. I want to see the bones of how it works. And one of it is you have this um, AI that everyone is talking to most of the time, which is uh, Bagley. Bagley. I was going to say Wheatley, but I meant <laughs> it's Bagley. close. It's very <laughs> close to Wheatley, and it doesn't sound like Danny Wallace, but it does sound like Danny yeah. Wallace. Yeah. Um, as in, I don't think it is Danny Wallace, but I don't think, I don't think Ubisoft would go back to the open world Danny Wallace voice in your ear well. I think they made a list of British personalities they know of, and there was Cockney Geezer, there was Old Lady, and there was Sarcastic AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the three British people. <laughs> and they got them all in there. Um, yeah, so 
so I can see how you can have characters talking to the AI and the AI's response is almost always the same. But the AI also uses people's first names. Yeah, I've got to believe that's like what we see in that video is the intro mission. And that is a scripted representation of what will, uh, you know, eventually... Yeah. After that, you will, like that drone guy they're trying to recruit. I'm pretty sure that is a story objective to recruit that particular drone guy. You can't just go off and get some other drone guy. But this is the thing, like, given what they're saying about the game and how it works, that's quite misleading if that's what that is. Yeah. Because, you know, there's like a bit where, you know, he says, like, what happened to that first guy who helped me? And it's like, he didn't make it. Like, is that dynamic if he did make it and he switched characters? Yeah, that's true. Is it a different scene if you recruit that guy, but that guy doesn't die and he does the recruiting? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's there's so many different, like, it would be very impressive if it was modular in that way, and it would be actually close to that sort of modular storytelling stuff people were banding around a couple of years ago. But, yeah, I just came I'm, with this feeling of, like, I don't believe it yet, <laughs> yeah. like, at all. Um, I'm expecting that, like, that is the start of the game, and you have to pick those three specific people. Maybe, they, maybe Ian can survive, and there's just a different line for if he survives, but it's those three characters. And then after that, you're let out into the open world and then you can possess anyone. And then I would think that future story cutscenes, I believe them that you, whoever you are is the star of the cutscene and has voice lines and stuff. But I bet Bagley stops using your first name and like there's just a, a little bit of a step back from that. Yeah, you'd think so. Although maybe not. Like it's not <laughs> out of the question. They could get, you know, get the names in there somehow. Like they probably know all the names it can be. But imagine if a character in your squad refers to another character in your squad by first name, because there's do. 20 different versions yeah, of right. <laughs> that. Because they do do that as well. The like, other people are constantly calling you and saying, like, what happened to so-and-so? Yeah. Like, the little old lady says it was a shame about Ian. Yeah. It was a shame about yeah, that- Ian. I mean, um, to be fair, for working in games journalism, I learned Tom and Chris, <laughs> and that's been fine. <laughs> there was a time on PC Game where you also needed to know the name Mark, <laughs> and that would cover you. <laughs> I added Phil and John and then I was sorted. It's yeah. like, oh, great, brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah. Because sort of, actually, like, it looked fun as open world games go. It looked mm. pretty. But there's a there's such a big question mark over the thing, the core thing that it's promising to do differently. And it's just like, I really hope for their sake that it's this isn't smoke and mirrors, that they're not sort of over-egging it at this stage because it feels like yeah. quite an easy thing not to over-egg. It's for me, so this is um, a creative directed by Clint Hawking, as uh, as was rumoured. Um, mm. And uh, so that gives me a lot of faith that, that it will be something interesting. It's not going to be a total fake out. And uh, yeah. I, I believe that you really do play as just whoever you pick and that there is no main character. And that's kind of the, the cool part for me. But it's kind of a win-win for me because either they are able to merge you know any whatever character you're playing as into the story in a seamless way in which case fine that's probably better for me than a, being a fixed protagonist um or they can't and there's just way less of that stuff which is like not my favorite thing anyway you know i'm kind of always wanting to do the more systemic open world stuff and skip the story part yeah um, right and so if they just do less of that because it's so fucking expensive to make that would be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah it certainly is I have Did- a thought or two, mm-hmm. go for it. several, maybe three. <laughs> I'll see how they go. But they didn't seem to naturally slot into literally anything you were talking about. So I'm just going to list them. <laughs> so one was a thought about how I am glad that they seem to be stocking up on elderly lady animations for, <clears throat> uh, I don't really much like feel bothered about watchdogs but i am hoping that they can then repurpose them uh from their library for an elderly lady girl gang game <laughs> that i would like or possibly a game of uh rosemary and time the yeah. uh, itv murder mystery mm. or the next assassin's creed <laughs> <laughs> indeed assassin's creed midsummer i would <laughs> <laughs> massively midsummer i have been droning on about this for years climbing to the top of the cathedral to, yeah. uh, <laughs> the sink point but yeah like diving the- to some petunia bush like <laughs> Imagine all of the different counties of Midsummer in a massively multiplayer online experience, and all you're doing as a character is solving murders. <laughs> so many murders, Tom. So there many would have to be a lot. <laughs> I was going to say who's doing the murders, but I think that's what you're there to find that's out. That's the point. Chris. That is the Don't spoil whole it. thing. Um, my, I feel like other players, like whether you ask them to or not, would ultimately be doing some murders. <laughs> 
Yeah. Maybe that could be it. You just have to solve the murders committed by your fellow In the players. process of solving the other murders, you end up yes. accidentally shooting somebody because you meant to press X <laughs> to pick up the item. Um, yeah. And then the another thought that I had was um, about the, uh, the, the actual world itself. Like, there's something about it that isn't working for me from what I saw. And, like, the the best way that I can try and describe it is, um, you know how everybody's gone to the rapture had like, uh, obviously it was set in the past, um, before the dial, uh, area codes changed, um, in our phone numbers. Uh, and, but it, it was so clearly made by a set of people who remembered those things mm. very clearly yeah, right. and had lived in that atmosphere and stuff. And obviously this is a very different game. It's set in the future, so it's not about like remembering or like evoking, you know, nostalgia or any of those things. And it's by a huge team, presumably spread across lots of different places. But I think that the thing that was missing for me was like you've got all of these places, you've got the the landmarks highly visible, the the sort of uh the the street setup seems actually like broadly correct. Um mm. and but it, it didn't seem to show any of those touches that implied it do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that I think the 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 moment that there was one moment where it did happen, and it was when there was somebody crouching down, I think, um, cleaning something, and they were wearing one of those orange high vis jackets or vests rather. Yeah. And I suddenly thought, oh, hang on, that that actually felt for a second like a thing I would actually see in London. But the rest of it, like, uh, there's there seems there's it feels like there's a veneer between me and the the idea of London mm. that that game is. It's also showing. quite heavily um, overhauled in that the government's fucked off, isn't it? Yeah. And then some <laughs> corporation has come in and replaced it. And so that's like, there's, there's almost like Half-Life 2 level, um, you know, apparatus of oppression and mm. giant drones. And then um, I think Trafalgar Square is is done out as a rebel camp. Well, so it's there's... a very extreme take on the fourth plinth. <laughs> I don't get that reference, actually. <laughs> I laugh, but I don't get it. You know the empty plinth in um, Trafalgar Square, and then they have, like, a, I think, a public vote or whatever, or a, whatever, a competition to see. <laughs> like, there's a rotating cast of a- uh, artists who put a different sculpture right. on that plinth. And the Rebellion and one, this one. <laughs> so I'm just sort of positing that perhaps this is all just a kind of a, a fourth plinth sculpture that's gone massively weird, <laughs> got very out of hand. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's modified anyway, so it's kind of um probably is not going to feel like recognizable London. No. That's yeah, uh, but I think there's still I know what Pip means so because it's like there's a bit where, like in the pub at the end where it's sort of like it seems like a good um a good rendition of a pub from um photo references mm. but without like you know the, I mean Phil Savage actually wrote a really good article for um, PC gamer about everyone's gone to the rapture, just pointing out all the things it got right about and wrong about the very specific details of the inside of a pub. Mm. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's those little things. Maybe, maybe you're just more sensitive to it when it's home, but yeah, I got the same sort of Yeah. Feeling. I mean, I'd be interested to know if people have that, that feeling about games set in their own yeah, hometowns. It's just that we don't tend to have London. I think I remember hearing way. this about Watch Dogs 2 because that's in San Francisco and, um, some of my San Francisco native friends were saying that it's weird to go around it because everything's sort of in the right order, like it's in the right position relative to each other, but it's all so compressed that yeah. you sort of you go down one street and suddenly, oh, I'm in this whole other part of the city. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. The other thing was just that I think I've been away from AAA games for a long time, and so hearing um, your man Begley, Bagley, Bagley, his face, whatever, um, announce like... Oh, cannabis and fentanyl together at last, or whatever about the the 
whatever the drug crop was. Mm. Um, it just, it smacked me in the face with exposition. Yeah. It was kind of like, that isn't a natural interaction. Like, so even if they do manage to do all this stuff with, you know, personalizing all the interactions with the things, it's kind of, it still breaks it ultimately for me. Cause it's kind of like, you'd know that if you lived in this, you know, this world for five minutes, I think. And so I, I think that's the other part that felt like it was breaking it for me. And it might and just be that it was, you know, the trailer trying to explain everything you were seeing yeah. or the, the, uh, footage rather. But it's that thing where it's like, it instantly tells me that it doesn't actually it's not acting like I live in that world. Like yeah. there are other ways that you can show people that stuff or build that sense of atmosphere. Like Camden market. Don't you mean Camden black market? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Don't you mean the dark, bad version yeah. in our dystopia that we live in? <laughs> so I don't know. Like I, and, and like I say, it might just be that I've been away from AAA projects for a long time and, <laughs> and that stuff is, just stuff I have forgotten happens in, you know, across the board. But I just, oh. there is always a voice in your ear saying things that don't feel at all natural. Yeah. <laughs> Canary Wharf? Do you mean Canary War? <laughs> <laughs> Canary Warp Drive. <laughs> because it's the future. Oh, I see. I mean, is it? I yeah, there's, there's like a, there's a fluorescent, like LED loops on the wheels of the buses that's how you know it's the future yep. oh did you see they also had the shard where we know a fox be in there <laughs> <laughs> let's find out <laughs> back into the cameras see if a fox be in there <laughs> mission two <laughs> maybe it's like got a job on the door now it's like you can't come in this is mine <laughs> watch fox <laughs> or not give fox a big check or whatever it is that happened i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> did we uh, make that up no it was real i think i don't know it was like <laughs> it's all blurring there together. was a man who was like the fox gave me a nod and then wandered off in the different direction or something yeah it was but eating builder's sandwiches at the top floor brilliant that's what happened here yeah. that fox is goals anyway yeah um speaking of goals animals <laughs> football <laughs> sharks oh right yes sorry i'm trying i'm trying to follow your segues <laughs> i'm not doing very well i don't really know you at all do i <laughs> man man eater yes is a game about a shark from tripwire uh, interactive mm. and tripwire did red orchestra the super realistic world war Two. Shooter and Killing, Killing Floor. Right? Killing Floor's the what the the big one, isn't mm. it? Or the bigger? Mm. The, I don't know. Maybe Killing Floor's just, pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's bigger now. My brother has like eight or nine hundred hours on oh it. Oh my god! And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe you spent that much time on a game. <laughs> and then I found <laughs> Dota. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So I mean, I don't. I I have no idea if they announced anything further. It just says coming soon, so there's not really any information on that front. But it was um, it was one of those sort of um, the comedic uh, enterprises where uh, a gentleman is busy singing along to his Walkman, and in the background, a shark is uh, wreaking havoc on the bay, and the whole thing ends with the man being uh, taken aback by the scene of devastation and then the shark eats a seagull and I was like <laughs> brilliant this is a 10 Salt. out of 10 give it an Oscar I love it <laughs> have you played other shark games because there is isn't there one called The Deep mm. uh, hang on so it might be multiplayer I think like one of you is the shark and the others are no divers. I think there's a game called Deep or the deep but that was about um it was a lovely thing in the left field collection where you had one of those bands that measures your uh either your breathing rate or your heart rate and it was you know an interesting tool for meditation and that sounds like perhaps not this <laughs> yeah not not the same game <laughs> okay <laughs> i know what you mean that there was a sharks versus divers multiplayer game yeah. recently mm. hmm. not recently like in the last couple of years but yeah, I mean, I just quite liked watching a shark have a nice time. <laughs> mm. And like, yeah, sure, shark. It's kind of cute. I don't. Yeah, and the thing <laughs> like is, it like. Was realistically depicted, but also had a cuteness to it. <laughs> yeah, 
down. I think it's just because it's having such a lovely day. <laughs> And like it ends by eating a seagull, and I'm like, I cannot begrudge you that. <laughs> like, yeah, good. I've eaten seagull. Have you? Yep. And so something like this shark and I have in common. <laughs> when? Like, um, what is the we're not so different, you and I. No, in to the shark. China. Oh, okay. In a restaurant. Do I the didn't, seagulls like, just catch here? One in no. The wild. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah. Anyway, so that was, I, I just thought that was a nice time. Mm. It was a good minute of my life. I think that might be the most anyone has enjoyed a, a strictly uh, cinematic trailer at mm. E3 this year. Mm. It did feel very thick on, with, with. Yeah. There was, I mean, so cinematics. Sony didn't have a conference and then a lot of the, not that that's where like the bulk of the stuff I'm interested in comes from, but then there was just so much stuff that where all they're willing to show was a cinematic trailer that really didn't tell you anything yeah i think like i can see the i don't want to write off the entire concept of the kind of tv spot mood piece trailer because they have a role and it's often on tv (laughs) when you're trying to you know uh, show the game to a broader audience or kind of express something about it it doesn't it just doesn't feel right to me at e3 i think um or for i mean and I, I, i mean i'm far from imagining that they'll be the only you know presence for those games a lot of the time but you know, so many, you're right, like, so many games were, were seem to be revealed with just, here's a two-minute mood piece. Well, this is the thing. They could easily have just gone, here's our Pinterest. Like, and you <laughs> mm. go, oh, cool, I, I see where you're going with that mood-wise, and the colour palette <laughs> looks spot on. Good luck to you, you know. <laughs> yeah. <They're> and, fantastic. <laughs> and things seem to have sort of blurred together a little bit for me, I think, this year. Like, there's some sort of, like sameness in terms of tone and approach yeah. that seemed like you know kind of i think you'd be tell the games apart but there was sort of a like the ubisoft conference was yeah like watchdogs was actually kind of refreshing <laughs> compared to the rest because uh it was 90 percent tom clancy things and in all the other tom clancy things you are playing as the military authority and um they're all super similar yeah. Tom Clancy's apolitical adventure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all apolitical. I, I will say I did like the um Assassin's Creed um story maker thing. I think that was kinda cool. Yeah, I didn't uh see much of that. So it seems to be it looks like a web interface. Like I don't know if, like <laughs> but it looks basically they seem to be opening up their own content creation tool a bit. So for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and it lets you set create stories which are essentially quest lines. Um, and write your own dialogue for cutscenes, obviously not voiced, <laughs> but write dialogue for characters and set objectives and place encounters in the world, like fairly straightforward. But given like, they seem to be done a bunch of cool things with Assassin's Creed in terms of just adding features like the tourist mode and yeah. this, which is like, now it's kind of like a game, a little, you know, quest creation system, right? Go make something, go make a little story, that kind of thing. Do you know how, um, how, <laughs> flexible it might be is it quite basic or could you do for example setting up a murder mystery you could yeah because it's, it's got branching <laughs> because it looked like it had a kind of simplified to a twine style logic basically like oh. an if then but that mixed in with the actual ability to then place encounters in the world and set up boss fights and combat encounters and stuff tom if mm. i give you 20 pounds would you make me a murder mystery in assassin's creed please <laughs> Uh, what do you estimate the scope for this murder mystery to be? Um, one murder, and then, and then, <laughs> so it's measured in murders. And then maybe an extra murder halfway through to help narrow things down a bit. I mean, so Heat Signature took three and a half years. The number of potential murders in that game is close to infinite. So my time per murder is actually pretty low. <laughs> so like, that's a good out of context. On, you kind of <laughs> You could have you could have done it by now. That could have been the easiest twenty quid of your life. But surely these tools are so user friendly that anyone can make whatever game they dream of. But I don't want to know the ending. <laughs> ah, I see. It's about spoilers, not about. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'll solve it really quickly. <laughs> At that point, it's like, well, why did the murder even take place if you knew it was going to happen? <laughs> and I'd be culpable, Tom. <laughs> culpable. Senseless murder. I know. <laughs> One way, I already know the answer. <laughs> you have to be my nemesis, and I will pay you twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a conspiracy to murder. <laughs> Chris, I will pay you fifteen pounds for the Why same. Why do I get less than Tom? <laughs> because you haven't got a proven track record. <laughs> That's fair. I've never made a murder mystery. <laughs> I have. <laughs> have you? 
I did one for both of you. We did D&D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Who died? <laughs> <laughs> was it Marsh? No. Oh. It was Chegg. Oh. Do you remember? Well, I mean, this is me, so <laughs> it's about 50-50. Hang on. Was this the person in the dirt? Chegg was a chicken and an egg. At the same once. time, yeah. Oh, was. but I thought we killed him. Her, it uh. then. Tom may have been culpable. <laughs> <laughs> but that was less of a mystery. We knew what well, happened. What had ha- well, you know, there was a mystery element there. I'm just trying to... <laughs> I'm basically, I'm arguing for that extra fiver. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I've created more interactive murder mysteries I'll for the people in this room than Tom has. I'll satisfying. <laughs> okay, fine. So I'll I'll give a you a tip. tip. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write you a good review on TripAdvisor. <laughs> I assume this is where it all goes down. <laughs> I assume I can just leave reviews for things that have happened to me on TripAdvisor. If you hire me, I'll subcontract it to Chris for seventeen fifty. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you become a publisher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all those two pounds fifties. <laughs> <laughs> they add up. Nice. Oh, That's cool. what you're taking twenty five percent. Okay. Well, I mean, you're you're the one taking the gamble on Chris. I might play it for less than two no, hours and ask for half. a refund. <laughs> 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 and then where will you both be at? <laughs> mm. All in all, it's good that they finally opened up uh, game development. <laughs> <laughs> The thing I liked about this is the, the um the video they did. It's not, it's it's not so much a trailer. It's like a little, very short sort of vidoc kind of thing. But the um. Um, all the examples of like writing you can do in, in the game, you know, when you do your own, put your own words in the cutscenes are really super weird. Like one <laughs> of them is just Herodotus quoting, um, girls just want to have fun <laughs> by Cindy Lauper. And like, um, that's amazing. Yeah. And, um, well, you can make them say whatever you want. Um, <laughs> like, oh my God. I yeah. am going to get my revenge on so many people from classical literature. <laughs> but like, but it made me realize like these, these must be the lines they, they would joke. Great. Like, it, the, <laughs> who was that? <laughs> just all of them really. <laughs> Let's start with Herodotus and like just see who else is around. Um, but yeah, I mean, the actual writing of Assassin's Creed Odyssey half the time is at miles off that. Um, but yeah. So that was nice. That was, that was a bit different. Um, mm. what else did happen in terms of stuff that, so there's a couple of examples of, of games super, super into don't know what are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can loop these in together. Elden Ring. What's that? Oh, that's a- it's the new From Software game, which is a, the, and the, it's set in, uh, curry curry mix. Yes, the curry curry mix people <laughs> have made. Uh, that's true. That's um, Pip's deepest cut. Um, <laughs> their best game. Yeah, their best game. Well, so they've made it. They're making a fantasy game in a new universe, uh, which has been created by uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki and uh, George R. R. Martin, which is kind of interesting. Oh, like, what that do, one. Yeah, one I saw video. mention. But the the trailer. Yeah, a lot of arms. That's what I got from it. There was a lot, a lot of arms. arms. And I guess it's making up for Sekiro, where you're one arm short. Yeah, right. Lots of arms. That's and like, of course, I'll, I'll play it to death. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, um, I like everything they've done, including Curry Curry Mix. I guess <laughs> you don't know. I've what never played that it. I do know what it is, is because you mentioned it on the podcast before. But well, yeah, but I mean, you don't know its essence. It's you Curry, know? right? <laughs> you don't. You're not. You're not in the game, are you? You're just sort of like, you've read a wiki. Are you in the game? Yeah. <laughs> you've cheated yourself. You've learned nothing. <laughs> you you just, you have to live it to understand Living it. Living that curry, curry mix life. It's like all from software games. <laughs> you have to obsess over it and learn its ways and things. Yeah. Ooh. But yeah, I don't know. If, did anyone come away from that with a profound sense of... What it, mm, nope. Sure. No profound sense of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my wife I said hello. Um, the, uh, the girl other... with the dragon on her back. <laughs> yeah. or whatever. The other one, uh, was, was, was Deathloop, which, which pains me to say, because obviously, big yeah. arcane fan. Yeah. Stylish trailer. Don't know what we, it about do. I already thought I didn't know what it was about. And then when I talked to Alex, I extra thought I didn't know what it was about because I realized he had assumed it was multiplayer and I had assumed it was single player. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, I'm with oh, you. we just don't know anything. <laughs> well, I mean, like these things have this stuff in common. It's Elden Ring, Death Loop. Like there's a <laughs> kind of, you know, you need a, a noun and then you need a circle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, this, 
what they did show was it's Hat coil. I mean, there we don't go. A even game. know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know whether uh, like it shows a uh, someone. So there's a, there's a loop thing where when you die, you start the same time period again. Magic uh, and circle. This, this bloke. And, Sorry, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this bloke and this lady are both trapped in this. One of them YouTube. wants to stop the loop, and the other one wants to. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I will get through this summary if it kills me. <laughs> Silicon roundabout. <laughs> Silicon roundabout. <laughs> You could have gone magic roundabout there. Yeah, but I'd already used oh, magic, yeah. magic circle. I think. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> so I don't want to know what I don't know about Deathloop. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Bouncy ball. <laughs> anyway. Fatal pog. <laughs> These are getting more tenuous. I'm yeah. going to carry on my description. Yeah. Uh, the, the lady wants to keep the loop going. The man wants to stop the loop. We don't even really know. Is this is this a story about two specific characters, or is this an example of two characters and everyone's trapped in some kind of death loop and they've all got their own agenda? And we don't even know if it's multiplayer or single player. And it had a kind of um, retro styling to the sort of UI and yeah. the, kind of a, a bit of a prisoner vibe. Um, but that is it. Like we I feel just like don't any know of those could be GDC talks in a few years' time <laughs> by Arcane. <laughs> They also, like, the combat that they showed was just regular guns, just like SMGs and stuff, and it was nothing, there was which some is magic. noteworthy, right, um, it didn't sort of feel arcane-ish in the, in the sense mm. that we got come to use it, where they make primarily stealth games with kind of, um, less of the direct shooting. Hmm. What if it's a two-person battle royale game? <laughs> Short rounds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because obviously, like, again, it would have made such a big difference just to have a little bit more information about what it actually was, because new game from Dishonored and Prey people should be, make more of a splash, and maybe it's a bit of a danger of that kind of, like, this exists. I think the only thing you can get away with, the, I mean, Nintendo got away with, this exists with the Breath of the Wild sequel, <laughs> partly because that was such a kind of low-key kind of, this exists, like, you know, <laughs> relative level like of the name. The... Yeah. We are making this, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else jumped out that people want to talk about from, I could talk about Star Wars. Yeah. They revealed. Oh, you slipped that in so casually ah. as if you haven't been building up. To well, this. no, cause I'm really underwhelmed. Like, oh. like I don't care. <laughs> I and thought you were just kind of... like, a and bit Star Wars. No. And oh. this is the thing that wasn't a cinematic. It was, they showed actual yeah. gameplay, but didn't do them any favors. <laughs> yeah. What Shit. does one do in the So Star this Wars? is the thing. It's like, so this is, um, the, uh, everyone's wanted a single player, proper single player Star Wars game for ages. It's by, uh, Respawn, who most recently made Titanfall 2, which is extraordinary, and Apex Legends, which is great. Um, and I feel like from the, and you, you assume that they will pick a strong slice of game for their, yeah. for their 12 minute E3 footage. And, I feel like I've played this game so many times. Yeah. I feel like I played it when it was called The Force Unleashed. Yep. And I played it when it was called Uncharted. <laughs> but now Lightsaber is in it. Like, it's, yeah, I was really, really underwhelmed. And that's like, and, you know, obviously the, it's easy to say that I would play anything with Star Wars on it. But actually, I kind of won't. Because <laughs> I kind of, you know, have seen a lot of that universe and would like to be surprised by it. And I was kind of yeah. taken up by how unsurprising it was. It was both, like... They didn't show anything we haven't seen in another game. And also the stuff they did show wasn't especially good. Like the combat didn't look especially satisfying or kind of yeah. tactically interesting. And then the running and jumping and climbing and story stuff didn't seem all sub uncharted. Like it just seemed like a pale imitation of other things. Yeah. Like even, um, Jedi Academy, like, yeah. you know, which had, you know, fairly open missions where you go and do a thing in a, um, in a facility covered in stormtroopers and, that is a fundamentally kind of systems driven force and lightsaber game at the end of the day. It was way more compelling, like slowing time to stop a fan blade. Yeah, God, I've done that so many like, times. <laughs> it was like, there's a, there's like a list of things that you probably shouldn't, I was going to say you shouldn't be allowed to do because it's going to be space for things, but it's like, <laughs> you shouldn't you show should, in your E3 trailer. <laughs> yeah. 
um, big door dented inwards blow in with the force. <laughs> hmm. Um, like, yeah, slowing a flatten blade. There's so many different variants on the slowing a fan blade thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, does anyone get time powers in a game when they're not near a massive fan blade? <laughs> uh, big spiders. Yeah. Another cliche if, just taken uncritically with no new spin on it. <laughs> if you pay me £20, I will make you a new Star Wars mission in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about we do a quick pro quo? I um, want the money up front. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to refund the one you paid us for. <laughs> um, no take you back. Yeah, <laughs> there's even, there's that, there's that moment where like he uses his force power to sense the echo to fight, to listen to what happened to this particular stormtrooper who's been killed. But the stormtrooper is dead in like a massive spider web in a spider cave. <laughs> and, um, and then the stormtrooper's last words, which is, I guess what you hear is like, uh, we're we're exploring disturbance uh, in the big cave full of webs, <laughs> and then you hear a skittering sound. What's that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Didn't need the force for this. Okay. <laughs> like, but yeah, like even that, like it's like he's just skyped in. Yeah, like, well, what? yeah, it's like, but even that, like, use the force to sense the last moments of someone's life just feels super gamey. Yeah, um, yeah, it was really, uh, yeah, a bit, bit, bit sad, really, because like the other thing is, you know. Um, I am genuinely pretty pro what has happened with Star Wars Last Copy is under Disney's auspices. And one of the things that's happened with Star Wars Last Copy is, is it got substantially more diverse and it got more kind of more interesting protagonists and more of them. Until and now. Until <laughs> now. Um, yes, Pip. So, <laughs> Raise your hand like but, a classroom. <laughs> didn't want to interrupt um so what could they have done with the force to answer this question should have unleashed it <laughs> or what at least awakened to answer what question <laughs> well as in if if you want to know what has happened to your friend or whatever yeah. this person was like how would how would he have legitimately used the force to do that if it wasn't supposed to be listening to like old phone calls or something i think well, like, it's not what that, would, I, if you were a Jedi, what <laughs> would you do to answer this question? My argument is that he didn't need the Force to tell how the man in the spider cave next to the spider web, <laughs> after you just fought two massive spiders, <laughs> died. Oh, so he wasn't looking for him. <laughs> well, no, he just walked past him and it's like, how did this guy die? Like, it, was not, it was not it was not plot critical, it was just... That's so stupid. It is, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what's... Th- how did this person become a Jedi? Like, is there no vetting process? I don't think so, because it's after the fall of the Order in Fallen Order. So then, but surely that means there's, like, either if there's no gatekeepers, no one can come in at all, because mm. there's no gate. Yeah. But, or... Or everyone can everyone come in, because there's no keeper. In. So who's, who's, how did this person, like, who... I want to speak to a manager. <laughs> like, what's it's an happening? extremely average white man who has got um, this power. So yeah, maybe a familiar <laughs> tale. Yeah, he's found a lightsaber, and he can do a big push. <laughs> <laughs> and those are and those are the fan. criteria of being a Jedi. So like, uh, the sort of dregs of the late prequels era, you know, games. Like that's the thing. Like, um, yeah, it's almost a bit frustrating because it does feel so force awa- force unleashedy, and like, like force unleashed wasn't like terrible if you took it as this big mad comic book that was like not like you were called Jake Starkiller. You right? were called Jake. <laughs> I don't know. No, you you were no your no what? your name was Garen Malik. Oh really? No, or Galen Marek. It was one of the two. I'm getting the. And then, but you were the Star Killer. That was your. Oh, I thought Star Killer was literally your surname. Isn't that the no. guy from the um the music film? The uh, we're listening to my Walkman. <laughs> the man <laughs> in the in the Walkman. Gonna need more to go on. The, no, you don't. <laughs> plenty. The man in this the Walkman. more than you'd usually get. You know, like who uh, with Jake the Star Killer. He kills stars, but doesn't really with his, and <laughs> listens to the music from his, um, his mum from Earth and then Kurt. Guardians from- of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. Star Lord. <laughs> oh. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. I was going on Baby Driver for a bit there. Like, yeah, I was on Baby Driver. Um, so no, yeah. <laughs> No, that's Star Lord. Uh, okay. That, that's that's Chris Star Lord. I feel like I'm a bit more broken than usual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so um, no, because um, he was called Star Killer because in the first draft of A New Hope, it was Luke Star Killer, not Luke Skywalker. Um, and then <laughs> George George uh, Lucas changed that because 
It's a bit, a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> John <laughs> Lucas in a rare, rare occurrence of a bit much. I like that they've gone with the, you know, celestial noun and then mm. a verb, you know. So yeah. <laughs> oh god, not this noun and a ring. This is going. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, sun cuddler. <laughs> 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 what <laughs> cloud dancer moon tickler <laughs> all good names um anyway. anyway as jeremy moon tickler in respawns <laughs> um, jedi fallen order or whatever it's wouldn't called wouldn't you be so much more inclined to play it if, if his name that? is all right yeah they can save this by calling him jeremy moon tickler yeah, do we know his name, his name? It's a Jeremy Moon tickler now. <laughs> Have you not been listening? <laughs> like, there's it's Herodotus. Um, uh, I, 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 yeah, I just it's strange, so so underwhelming, really kind of disappointing. Like the yeah, there's kind of two mysteries, isn't there? Like one is like, how did respawn not? How did Respawn fail to make an interesting game? And then, like, technically, why did they show? <laughs> like, if, you, if you're not there yet, just spend some more time I and show it when you're ready. They failed to make an interesting trailer rather than an interesting mm. game, unless people have played Maybe it. Maybe it was 12 and minutes of, it's no good. It was 12 minutes of unedited footage. Oh, so, I didn't like, know that. Yeah, I, I literally was... haven't really paid much yeah. attention to E3 apart from yeah. sharks and, uh, other, other things. Sharks and dogs. Oh yeah. Old, uh, Forrest Whitaker's character is in it. Although I don't, I don't Younger. know if it's Forrest Whitaker. Well, it's, yeah, Saw Gerrera in the era between his appearance in the Clone Wars cartoon <laughs> and his, his appearance in Rogue One. Is, Suntir Fell in it. No, Suntir Fell isn't canon anymore. Oh. <laughs> Was that the one thing you needed? My one fact. <laughs> That's a good fact, though. Damn it. That is a good fact. <laughs> I He's thought not... I was going to score a point. Yeah. <laughs> oh. the, 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 uh, yeah. No, I could bang on about. Now are you mad about the canon reset? I'm so angry. I'm not even sure who I'm That makes you a true Star Wars fan. It's just like, look, I spent so many hours just for that one fact (laughs) to seep into my brain and you've taken it away from me and I don't even know who to be angry about. Imagine if it was like thousands of facts. (laughs) Crying out in terror. (laughs) Thousands of dire YouTube channels that... (laughs) YouTube will not stop recommending me. <laughs> Thousands of influencers. Crying out and then never being silenced. Um, mm. yeah. Um, so yeah, not to, uh, I, yeah, I, I never really liked coming down in the game, but I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just, woof. Uh, there was, on a more positive note, uh, Unexplored 2 was shown mm. on the PC gaming show, um, which is kind of a big surprise actually, because Unexplored 1 is this roguelike that was, um, uh, kind of well known for its level generation it's randomly generated levels as most of them are mm. but this one is especially complex and involved and sophisticated and i think the game was even started perhaps as part of a phd on this subject mm. like some academic connection um and it had sort of elaborate you know switch and key and and arrangements that were all uh interestingly different um but it was all just in a big dungeon and the sequel they showed seems to be a, like a big open world with totally different terrain types and there's a you see a map at one point of the whole uh world that you're traveling um and the art style is completely redone and uh it looks like it's massively scaled up in terms of just the scope of the game and what it is it still has the defining trait of unexplored other than the level gen was strange combat system where your character is very much a circle <laughs> it's hard a to see circle, it as anything else you say. Yeah. <laughs> there was no noun in front of it i don't think um and combat was just about like facing the right way like you just had like if you had a spear it was just a thing sticking out of you and you just had to sort of point it in the right direction when someone came at you uh, i think you could press a button to like protrude it a little bit but it was all kind of physicsy and and very just based on what hit what and when lots of things are coming at you at once, it was all about just kind of trying to get your shield between yourself and it. Um, which is I, like, I think it sounds better on paper than it was in practice. In practice, I found it kind of fiddly and a little bit arbitrary. And it looks like they're stuck with that. There's a little bit of combat in the trailer and it was, um, I actually thought it looked kind of buggy at first, but I went back and rewatched it and I realized there's just like, there's a very sudden death. You're killed in a, in a sort of, uh, an animation that's so fast it almost looks like there's no animation for it. Um, but yeah, it's still about pointing your shield in the right direction. And I, I guess I, I feel like that can work, but it didn't for me in, in the first game. So I'm interested to see how they develop it. Cool. I think the other ones that stood out, um, 12 minutes. Yes. Oh yeah. I want to talk about that 
Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> Wait, no, I, you already introduced it. I was about to say that I wanted to talk about it, and then I forgot what it, I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> and then you said it, and then I was like, "Wait, no, I've got something to say." <laughs> <laughs> and you're using a spotlight well. <laughs> gone really well um no it's a game that i saw a few years ago at gdc yeah it's been in development a long time hasn't it yeah it's been yeah it's been a number of years now because um uh luis uh antonio who uh, is the developer uh was also the artist on uh the witness yeah and stuff like that so like there were obviously other side projects Mm. and like you know actual life things and but yeah so this is uh his thing and it's kind of a it's a time loop uh thing set in an apartment and um it looked from the trailer like uh the art has definitely a time uh, loop you say gone (laughs) (laughs) gone through a uh a big oh shit death loop (laughs) over that's where that's what started it oh was it yeah It's almost come full circle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you say. Oh, it's n- no. a noun. It's not. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, 12 minutes is, uh, it's set in an apartment and, uh, you play a person who comes home and, uh, t- starts talking to, uh, his wife and you can essentially, you know, pursue different, uh, conversational options. You can investigate different things in the apartment, um, and, and you gradually uncover more information over successive playthroughs because at the end of each loop or at least each loop that I remember playing and uh it, it seemed to still be true in the trailer um a, a policeman comes in and and violently arrests your wife and and so I think the thing that you're trying to find out is obviously why this is happening but there's lots of little things little threads to pull out uh around the apartment and figure stuff out and yeah. move things around and start asking questions and- i remember when i played it i like the arrest thing would happen and it would fade to black and mm. it would start all again and i i think i assumed i'd either been arrested or sort of blacked out or something mm. but then in the trailer they they said that the or i can't remember if this is in the trailer or the presentation or whatever but it was said that the cop actually beats you to death <laughs> which is like wow okay this yeah. is maybe not just a normal cop because <laughs> i only saw the <laughs> i only saw the uh the uh so i've i've had the experience that i had with it um but that was a few years ago now and i watched the the trailer i didn't know whether there was a presentation or not because um I've been, uh, just for, for context, I haven't just completely ignored it. I would have ignored it if, if I hadn't been doing other things, I think, as well, but I was doing a bit of, um, deadline cover for PC Gamer magazine. So I was, I have an excuse. That is my excuse. <laughs> um, but essentially, uh, yeah, I think my, my feeling even from, from back then was that the, there was something off about the arrest, like the the situation mm. escalated far too quickly and was far too like violent for it to be. And I think that that's like I, I think that that's a not a good thing in and of itself, but it's it it helps really make you want to know. Hang on, yeah. that was totally disproportionate, and and it gets you like instantly in the mindset of wanting to unpick exactly what's happened and and hang on your your wife seems to be someone that you don't actually know or is you know Mm. like has some big secret that she's hiding and so yeah i remember like poking around in um in the bathroom bin or in cupboards or like hiding in in like closets and looking through phones and all of that kind of stuff something i remember from playing it is that because for most of it, there's only one other character, which is your wife. Mm. And if you want to have a conversation with her about what's going on and the things you know, uh, obviously her initial reaction is disbelief. Mm. Like, uh, and so you have to convince her that you, that this is real. And I think there's some stuff where just like, because you've been through it before, you know, when certain things are going to happen. So you just tell her, oh, and like, 
yeah. this, this is going to happen out of the window and you're going to get a phone call and then when it happens and so that you learn how to persuade her that you know what that you're that you're in a loop and you get better at that mm. i also remember just uh having a lot of trial and error around making dinner <laughs> i was str- really struggling with this <laughs> oh like my I, god yeah or laying the table i tried table. to i think it was, it was like noodles in a bowl or something really. but i hadn't put the water in or that yes! i put the fork down but not <laughs> not some other utensil and and she was really pissed at me for that <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, and, and I remember being really interested to see how it, how it all came together and, and to actually, and I think this is, and do not say anything because I don't want any more spoilers than, than the basic having to read through the review <laughs> to prove <proofread laughs> it. Uh, but Outer Wilds, like it, again, mm, wow. it's like you reach the end of a loop and what you take with you is essentially the information yeah. that you've learned and you use that to build up the connections. And, and I, I like that there is a kind of vogue for games like that, or at least yeah. there was a vogue for it several years ago and they are now coming to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah think, right yeah that yeah. was a long the gdc's and igf's are three years ago coming home to roost <laughs> yeah this but was... like this minute is a, a game about loops as well mm. and that came out last year it's not in the same way i don't think but it it that that's whole yep. conceit is that you have a minute to i think that um that i either saw maybe even played 12 minutes in 2014 i think it was like <laughs> literally five years ago when it was mm. playable so this is a long long development um yeah it's interesting because um in 12 minutes like a key thing is that what your character can say to your wife is dependent on things that he's experienced in previous loops and outer wilds really doesn't do much of that at all no. it's very much just it's what you know as the player and mm. um most yeah. mostly that like you don't get to tell anybody in the world this is happening or have any kind of human connection with it it's all just <clears throat> what you mm. know about this world i think i'll be interested to see how much 12 minutes actually comes to a conclusion or has a, a for want of a better word solution mm. and how much is because um at the other end of that certainty spectrum is uh, something like um her story where mm. obviously you you the game ends when you're done piecing together things to your own satisfaction yeah and so i'd be interested to know whether or to to find out through playing whether um wh- which approach or which or where on that spectrum yeah of, and 12 minutes gives you a, a, like an immediate problem to solve, right? Mm. You're going to die if you don't do something about this. So you've presumably preventing that is the end state. Although that seems almost too presumably. simple. Presumably. <laughs> but I mean, there are other possibilities that I was thinking while I was, uh, you know, just over the course of this conversation where perhaps it's more about you get to a point where you feel like you can make an informed choice. You know, once you have a certain amount of information, you can mm. decide what to do with it, maybe. Because I, I guess at some point, it it's more about your agency when you have a certain degree of information. I don't, maybe that's just mm. like pondering too much without information. So, yeah. But yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. I'll be interested. I will mm. be very interested. Do we know if Telling Lies has the same thing of her story, where it's just kind of up to you when you finished it? I don't know, but they did show more of it mm. than that trailer. Um, That's the one that I haven't managed to catch up on. That's right. one that I do care about, but haven't seen. So yeah. tell me. Tell me. I, so, have you seen any trailer for t- Telling Lies? No, I haven't, actually. I, I think I've... Um, I've kept up with it via a couple of news stories but only in the sense of i am glad this is happening (laughs) and you know i mean i was doing my usual thing of largely ignoring games that i am excited about so that they just happen and i'm like oh lovely i'll play that now (laughs) rather than waiting (laughs) and so they showed a little bit more like so uh, it's uh, one thing this confirms is it's very much the same structure as her story um, in that you, you know, are with more characters. And the, the only thing they really showed in this is the ability to pause. Uh, one is, is, is pause and obviously rewind track through the clips and then select specific words in the subtitles and search for them. 
Yeah. Um, so, like in her story, you would listen to what someone said, and then you would type in what you yeah. what you wanted to search for, which might be a word they said, or it might be just be like something else. But mm. in this, it seems like there's an actual mechanic of clicking on. And I, I wonder if part of that is it makes it um, probably more compatible with a pad. Yeah, I can imagine better for other platforms. Definitely. Better for other platforms for certain. Um, and it would be interesting if you didn't have three. If if it was like this is speculation, but if it wasn't freeform typing, but what words you've discovered, then you can gate things. In, yeah. In a more I mean, meaningful way. I can't really remember a time in her story where I searched for something that no one had said. <laughs> like, I wasn't really guessing in that way. Was- I can, and I, that's how I managed to spoil it for myself, but it's based on one, yeah. one very specific thing. Um, but yeah. He described it as an open world game this time, which is very weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite picture that. <laughs> like, in what sense? It but will it's come out for the phone. Supposedly. <laughs> um, uh supposedly it's um bigger in scope in terms of like it takes place over multiple years and there's is there four characters or five characters i think there's four a number mm. more than one which is what her story was i mean to be fair people say open world they don't mean it anyway like it's a meaningless term it just means a bit big (laughs) (laughs) sure probably fair it means list of icons really so presumably you'll have like the some crafting there'll be some (laughs) (laughs) A, like heat signature is kind of open and you can go anywhere within the space but there is no world there's zero planets in it <laughs> open stuff <laughs> open nebula <laughs> um any other games that we wanted to draw out i'm glad Baldur's Gate 3 exists and that larry and <laughs> are making it and that our friend adam is is writing on it yeah. that's all good news um, I would like to talk about Animal Crossing. Okay, yeah. let's talk. Uh, yeah, we, like we don't care. It's E3, so we don't care about the PC thing anymore. Let's talk about Animal I Crossing. I watched it on my PC. Actually. That's true. I yeah. think you're fine. We watched. We watched it on the PlayStation. <laughs> and quite frankly, uh, I this is a third my podcast today, <laughs> so maybe just listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said we would talk about. Oh, no, I meant like if uh, I was having an imaginary argument with the people who maybe don't want to talk about non PC games, I see. but I have a microphone and you don't. I guess <laughs> okay, so. Fine, that was where I'd landed on that, mm. and but then maybe that's not how to get them to listen to my opinions. <laughs> so. It's done now. I know. Could you erase this? No. Oh. <laughs> Well, anyway, you're stuck in a time loop. Go back. (laughs) And then fast forward through the bits that I said. Okay, cool. Um, Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, is coming out, not this year, but that's very sad. So we won't talk about that. Instead, let's talk about how amazing it looks. (laughs) Did you see the trailer? I did. Did you see the gameplay footage? I did. I saw a very bare tent and a log. (laughs) But I've never played an Animal Crossing game, so what? I'm I'm looking forward to this. I want to play one, but I have not yet played one. Interesting. Why did we let him in? You seem to have a mixed relationship with Animal Crossing, and I see. What do you mean mixed? Sometimes complaining <laughs> about certain. Parts but I of it. complain because I care, it, like with all of my loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, this is the thing because Chris was like oh, it'll be really nice to have something we can play together and I can do it in a chilled out way. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> that is not how we would play Animal Crossing. Thank you very much. You have to, well, yeah. you have to invest your heart and soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that backfired. Because that's what they've, so that's one of the things they've added is the ability to hop in like live, you know, play with someone else directly and just do some gathering, but on like their game to some extent. Well, right. you, I think you can all live on the same island, up to eight people, I think. And mm. then, you know, if you want to hang out with people or do tasks or, you know, help each other gather um crafting materials and things, then you can do that. You can um swap who is the leader of, you know, any given play session. You can, um like, just sort of... Yeah, it's, it it just seemed really lovely and quite fluid, actually. Like this sort of idea of dropping in and out of of playing. Together. Perhaps for people um, who who don't aren't aware, do you want to unpack why why it's good, why it's exciting? Let me think. So, <laughs> well, it's you know because there's a lot of Animal Crossing thoughts that I have <laughs> in my head. Um, 
But I mean, Animal Crossing is a life sim game and it is annoyingly in some ways exclusively on Nintendo platforms and also mobile phone. Um, but uh, it's this just absolutely charming thing that is a mixture of busy work and interactions with lovely and awful animals. <laughs> and um, it, it like also just sort of a, a home decoration element as well so you get to just play around with you know furniture arrangements and bullying your neighbors and and (laughs) so on and so forth um but this uh version um this the new one that's coming up feels uh, a lot more flexible than than previous versions it's uh the idea seems to it because in in the most recent few Animal Crossings, I love them and they have each made changes to the formula, but it's been sort of, it, it has felt certainly a lot more by degrees, like I could kind of predict pretty much all of the the insects and what I would need to do and, y- you know, those kinds of activities. You know, predicting the insects. <laughs> um but you know the the core systems felt largely the same Mm. um across you know sort of since the gamecube um but then i uh so but in this one it's it's not a matter of oh you know uh buying furniture and things like that it's about crafting uh that furniture and so it then puts more of an emphasis on going out and doing these you know collecting uh you know things that fall out of trees or you know building up you know there's a sense of like actually building uh these things which i think will actually work hopefully quite well with with animal crossing how you just sort of reach into the 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 leaves of a tree and pull out some logs (laughs) (laughs) yeah you sort of like you you flail an axe at it and then a bunch of different types of wood fall out which is kind of like okay cool like i'm not sure if it just stops giving you wood for a while and then (laughs) Is that? <laughs> oh. I know what Chris is laughing about. <laughs> is that a sex thing? <laughs> oh, God. What, what have I said? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? No. <laughs> no, obviously not. Um, but I did. I mean, I didn't realise I'd said it just then. But then I saw that you were looking at me. Anyway, um, oh, what was I talking about? Oh. Uh, but it it kind of I think it helps make what you're making feel more related to the place that you're living in whereas otherwise it was a bit more oh I I shook a tree and a a table fell out (laughs) you know I I found this thing you know that someone else didn't want that kind of do you think it's going to be less capitalist no (laughs) (laughs) so this is a thing that i've been thinking for a while and someone actually uh i saw a tweet go around that was saying a similar thing but basically like something that's been knocking around my head for a while is that actually tom nook is really nice like this isn't (laughs) capitalism at all like there is no pressure to pay back my loan he's not gonna (laughs) you know repossess my home he's like yeah sure get started pay me back whenever it's (laughs) like Oh, okay. <laughs> he's certainly shoring up some kind of power. Like, well, <laughs> I don't know what he's getting out of it, but, you know, he's obviously clearly got the resources. Maybe it's just a, a game, a power game. But you game. can ultimately pay him entirely off. Yeah. Is so... Tom look a raccoon? He's a tanuki. <laughs> he is. Uh, is a tanuki a raccoon? <laughs> is it? I thought that it was, but I might just be wrong. I thought it was the Japanese word for a raccoon, but... Mm. I is, don't know. If only there was a way that we could I will find Google that it. out. <laughs> There's a character in Smash called the Villager. What is that? Is that Animal Crossing? Well, because, uh, yeah, yeah. And they just have like, the default, they're kind uh, of, it's sinister models. in Smash. They have an axe <laughs> and a tree yeah. and there's, it's just, there's something <laughs> weird about it. Um, but yeah, the other big thing is that previously the only places that you could put furniture down were inside buildings, um, like inside your own house or inside like particular 
um, extra spaces in the museum or in your camper van in Pocket Camp. Um, whereas in this, they're sort of showing, oh, you can put down all of this stuff outside. And so presumably you can make this absolutely lovely environment where it's a lot more customizable because other previous uh, versions the only stuff that you could put down outside were like amenities and stuff like you could ask someone to build like a miniature stonehenge somewhere <laughs> but uh, you know it wasn't like you could Typical lay down <laughs> you you couldn't like lay out a picnic spot or you know whatever else and make it hyper personal so i'm genuinely absolutely excited about that and i'm also excited about the um the potential for passive aggressive furniture places <laughs> because like i would absolutely love to see what happens if you try and wall villages in using <laughs> tables yeah you know? this is the, there was a i can't remember if it was everquest or ultima online but there was a uh, rogue guild of drive-by carpenters who would trap <laughs> people by building chairs around them <laughs> they couldn't move <laughs> That's so good. Um, and then just like loads of the other stuff just looks really charming. Like the seasons looked absolutely delightful and, um, they have a way to cross rivers using a pole vault. And I was like, that's the best thing I have ever seen in a video game. And I don't know how much of that is because there have been so many times when I've wanted to cross from one side of a town to the other and the river is cutting in the. <laughs> wrong place and i have to walk all the way to a bridge and i don't want to so this this feels amazing <laughs> and the idea like you know you can go fishing but you can actually do it using bait rather than just the sort of the oh throw out your line and then if the um exclamation mark comes up you know tap kind of thing so yeah just all of that sounds amazing like genuinely wonderful how long have cool. i been talking uh i don't know but i can confirm that that tanuki is a japanese raccoon dog mm. um, dog. um but it is a mistranslation to say that it translates to raccoon okay because a raccoon is according to wikipedia an unrelated animal with superficially similar appearance oh, <laughs> so that's um, interesting yeah so it is a uh a, a raccoon type dog creature okay <laughs> that's cool um, so there you go. Um, sometimes also confused for a badger or, you know, or a fox. <laughs> cool. Okay. And that is what Tom Nook is. And actually, it was only yesterday, I hasten to admit, or I hate to admit, that um, I realized that Tom Nook is a pun on Tanuki. All right. The um, <laughs> Mario has a little Tanuki suit, doesn't he? Does, he does, yeah. Some of his, it's, uh, it's less cute when he does it. Cause he's, <laughs> Mario's cutest outfit is the bee costume. Hmm. Is anything Mario does what? cute? The the bee costume is because it makes him more of a bee shape. Like, it, it makes him a lot more... Sort of... <laughs> well, <laughs> can't fault the reasoning. <laughs> well, no, because otherwise you could just say, oh, he's wearing, like, a, a sexy bee costume. Or like a... No, <laughs> I was you... not going to say that, actually. <laughs> no, but you Mario, know what I slutty mean. bee, like, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there's a very big spectrum of potential bee costumes which runs the gamut from like oh i've just got some like dealy boppers on my head and like a short stripy skirt all the way to <laughs> i'm Mario like a really on. fluffy pom-pom bee like thing that looks like an actual bee <laughs> all right, yeah, right that's yeah. the bee costume spectrum <laughs> <laughs> we all know it from high school <laughs> like you to mark on this spectrum where your bee costume will be so that we don't double up um, <laughs> I can't uh, why am I talking um, anyway have you got any questions about Animal Crossing <laughs> thank you for coming no, to my that TED talk covers it. <laughs> why does this um, why, why has this one caught your eye Tom uh, it's on Switch right yeah. yeah I have a Switch okay, I've never cool. previously had I <laughs> mean you baffled. have a phone <laughs> Why yeah. aren't you playing Pocket Camp and helping me get into the quarry every day when I ask? Because I hear very mixed things about the phone Not version. Not from me. Oh, I yeah, do, definitely yeah, from pretty me. mixed things from you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have said that the, the mobile version is very exploitative. Um, yeah. That's why I, like, I, I did have this weird feeling of this unfamiliar kind of worry, which I don't usually have with any Nintendo things. I think because I'm so used to the the um mobile project um because i've been playing it pretty much every day since it came out wow. 
Uh, I know you're right. It's just <laughs> tragic. Um, but I've become so used to the fact that it tries to push you into its premium currency items that when it was saying, oh, and then um, when it started talking about the Nook Miles, this kind of like in-game loyalty system, <laughs> I was like, is this the premium currency? Yeah. And it was such a weird moment because there is no other previous Animal Crossing game that has made me worry in that way. Mm. But the the mobile game has definitely made me aware that that could be a possibility mm. i guess and and i'm not saying that it is i don't have any information that it is i don't know if they've actually been been asked that yet i haven't had a chance to look but it was this really weird moment of oh wow i'm i'm now so used to it that it actually feels like a potential part of any animal crossing game yeah which is weird and i'm not comfy with it i think Hmm. Yeah, I didn't see, like. There was no inkling that's what it actually is. No, relative to it just being an achievement system it's, with the currency attached. But. It's entirely a context thing. Yeah. It's because the game that they have currently is Pocket Camp, and they, you know, they even mentioned it on the stream. So it's the thing that they kind of want you to be playing. So it's like, but but the flip side of that is that you learn lessons from that, or you at least bring in. Some em- I've brought a lot of emotional baggage from that game. I will <laughs> never speak to Octavian again because of what um, happened he with knows. that best friend token. Um, <laughs> like I genuinely will not even give him um, fruit when he asks for it. <laughs> <laughs> not even fruit. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> like he'll turn up and and it'll just be like, oh, you know, they, they each can give you three requests while they're around and you get crafting materials and stuff off it as well. Which is another reason that it didn't feel a million miles away, because like that game has used you know yeah. crafting materials to to buy furniture and stuff. But um yeah, uh it, but now when he turns up and he's kind of like got any shells I'm just like, we're not talking. We're still not talking and I am not talking. We're going done, to Octavian, to you. you know what you did. Yeah, and I and I feel a bit like I'm a bit worried that maybe Octavian will turn up in you know, on the island in the new the new knife. Animal Crossing and I'll have to figure out what to do. Because at least in Pocket Camp there's a rotation every three hours and they leave. <laughs> you know? And God Whereas gone. With, uh, with well, with previous Animal Crossing stuff on consoles, they move in and then you have to actively be a dick <laughs> or ignore them for ages until they move and then they're like, Well I'm going and you're like <laughs> this is very true to life. <laughs> oh. It's very real Animal Crossing. That's the thing I picked up by osmosis. Over the years. <laughs> it's this just, it's how I modeled all of my social interactions, mm. to be honest. It will, if you ever play that game, you will know my life. Yeah. yeah <laughs> my struggles. Yeah. Dress like an Animal Crossing character. <laughs> Sometimes speak like an Animal Crossing character. Mm, yes. <laughs> Dress like one for sure. <laughs> I am the mayor of this town. Yeah, exactly. They look to me to sort this out. <laughs> Be as patient as you can. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Le- what junior? Le- tell me how this began. <laughs> what was, was this? Is there a pun there in Les M- Miserable Crossing? No, no. no really. <laughs> Les Miserable Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh can you hear the people go? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I um, think that is most of my thoughts on Animal Crossing. I could keep going, but I think yeah. we should probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to give a very quick shout out to uh, Griftlands, which mm. is the next game from Clay, um, uh, which I've actually been playing, and I can't talk about what I've played, but I can talk about the trailer they showed, which is uh, just sort of shows how... Uh, it's something they actually announced like two or three years ago, uh, but apparently it's undergone some changes. I don't really know what they had before, but now it is a card game um, where the trailer shows like three approaches to the same situation where uh, the main character, who I know is called Bleep, <laughs> I don't know if that's revealed, um, uh, bursts into a bar and basically uh, tries to, uh, I think, initially fight their way through uh, by playing a Slay the Spire-like card game and fails and then uh, goes back to the start in some kind of death loop. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And then tries 
to negotiate their way through by playing uh, sort of conversational cards. cycle, if you will. <laughs> That's still and not a noun. You're it's... not a noun. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, tries to negotiate their way through, which is also a card game, um, and fails at that. And then on a third attempt, kind of like drinks with the other patrons and makes friends and then comes back with pals and then... I don't know, uh, fights their way through with their pals to get to some kind of secret room. And it's basically just showing that there were kind of multiple ways to approach goals in this game. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, deck builder card game from clay. It's single player and it should be on your radar because it's really cool. Do you want to make a noise in case you choose to have us bleep out the, uh, the name of the protagonist <laughs> and then we can replace it with whatever noise you make, you make like an bleep animal noise, noise or something? <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> Shall we do some questions now? Yeah. And then stop. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> I want to mention actually quickly, actually, before we do that, that um the reason I don't want to talk about what I've been playing this week is because I've been playing two things. One is uh Slay the Spire, which I should definitely not be allowed to talk <laughs> about after a year of people talking about Slay the Spire. I finally got it. Turns out it's really good. Both yep. comms were correct. <laughs> um then the other one is the fact that I'm just I think now getting towards maybe getting towards the end of Outer Wilds and that game is fucking phenomenal. And I don't yep. say that lightly. It's de- uh, you know, I will kill you if you tell me. I'm not going to. That's that game. That's I'm not going to. I'm just gonna say that like you know, <laughs> Alex sort of posited last week that it's game of the year material. I think it really definitely is. Um Yeah. Uh I have finished it since last week and it's amazing. Yeah, so thorough recommendation from me. Um it uh one caveat being um, it's given me the biggest ocean willies since Subnautica. <laughs> yeah. Um, and not just in an ocean context, in, in a sort of, uh, va- I didn't realize I could get the ocean willies in space, <laughs> but actually that makes complete sense because ocean willies, but in space is the entire of Lovecraft's work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, if you. Oh, I was very pleased. I, uh, came up with, uh, the 19 twenticles. <laughs> or, uh, talking about Lovecraftian settings. <laughs> that's good. So, Very good. Um, that's my gift to you. <laughs> Thank you. But you that's can't use right. it. <laughs> no. Uh, just, you know, um, credit me. I want the CC license on all the things. <laughs> Our first question comes from Choco Cookies, who writes, Hi, Box and Lever. I first heard the term blame space while listening to your podcast. Since then, I have realized that with my group of gaming buddies, I live in the blame space. <laughs> uh, oh, no. They go on to write, um, um, admittedly, I don't help myself taking on the role willingly in order to unite the group behind a single cause, blaming me for stupid gaming decisions. We mainly play a lot of team-based FPS games, PUBG, Overwatch, Fortnite. My question can you think of any online multiplayer games we could play together, which I might be better at than them, to give me a chance at having a holiday outside of the blame space, for however short-lived that is? Uh, keep up the great podcast, Choco Cookies. So, you had a good suggestion for this. Yeah, I want to say, it, it's actually kind of cruel for a friend to be in the blame space, because the purpose of the blame space is to leave one slot open on your matchmade team, <laughs> so that a stranger can come in and be responsible for everything that goes wrong, whether or not they actually are. That's the purpose, it's to <laughs> direct all that negative social energy towards a stranger who doesn't deserve it. <laughs> well, the thing that came to mind while you were reading that for me was the fact that... Um, this person sees their role on in the blame space as to unite their friends by you know giving them something to to rally around uh that being their stupid decisions <laughs> so is this perhaps a sign that they don't want the friendship group to continue like they want to sow discord by yeah you right know, forcing them to maybe reckon with each other's stupid decisions and make mm-hmm. better better choices like what's there's a lot psychologically to unpack here yeah there is however however the the <laughs> thing that one thing that definitely uh i know came to mind when i read this question was viscera cleanup detail mm-hmm. the game the first person game about cooperative mopping um after an fps level has been cleared by a bunch of doom marine style jib men mm-hmm. um and um this is good because it is impossible for anyone to be good at it in a way that someone else doesn't fuck up like it is well i'm good at it. you are good at it but <laughs> it's like 
like <laughs> but i'm the one that tends to not be involved in the jokes because i'm busy cleaning <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing i think that's why it works like it's a game where people who are crap at it can have a cheeky rebellion and being crap is like like almost like is a form of dirty protest whereas um being good at it actually makes you more vulnerable because if you immaculately clean a whole area and someone is bringing a bucket full of bloody water through <laughs> and accidentally physics it, I physics just is it up, like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> physics is everywhere. Or someone else is coming through with a mop at the same time and they bash into each other and it goes everywhere mm-hmm. and they got to do it again. Like, or sets off an explosion and yeah, oh. <laughs> falls in a sarlacc pit. But it's, it's usually com- comedic enough and like um, slapsticky enough that it's genuinely just still a good thing. Yeah, it's a good time like, oh, regardless. No, why have you done this? Have they described it as co-operative? <gasps> that's good. <Ooh. laughs> that is good. Sort of joke that makes everyone say "ooh," but nobody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't. Oh, it's not a joke, is it? It's just a, a clever. Well, that is a joke. It's, clever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke at all, Tom. It's anti-humour. <laughs> was it a joke? Yeah, co-mockery. Yeah, supposed to be a joke. Well, no, I just I like, thought it was a clever, uh, you know, a pun. But puns aren't, aren't puns jokes. Joke. No, they're plays on words. But the play is. But play doesn't mean. I mean, well, to be fair, how often does a pun make you laugh versus makes you go? Ugh. <laughs> and, and playing but that's the same for uh, like comedic <laughs> don't all the best jokes also make you go oh for fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah. your favorite joke that's what joke jail is for on our discord <laughs> so what's your favorite joke and you're not allowed to say co-moperative because that was <laughs> <laughs> i was not actually going to say my favorite joke all the time was a thing i just made up like two minutes ago <laughs> well i thought you might really double down on this <laughs> i'm not gonna have a good answer for this because it's no. hard to browse the catalogue of all jokes I've ever heard on the spot. <laughs> What's your favourite joke, Pip? Uh, why was the scarecrow oh. given a promotion? Don't know. Because it was outstanding in its field. That's very good. I do like that one. <laughs> it's, it, I, I wanted to make sure that I always had a joke on hand for if, you know, if it came up in an interview. <laughs> Did you know, this is, this is not my answer, but uh, do you know the chicken crossing the road thing does have a meaning to it? I mean, there's an answer to the question, is it? But I mean, like, it what? is a, it's not a non-joke, it's a joke. I don't understand. So, <laughs> it's a play on words, it's a pun. It's on get to the other side. The other side as in death. Why did you cross the road to get oh. to the other side? To die. What, so as in it gets hit by a car? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Which oh, makes no. total sense. As soon as someone said that, I'm like, oh shit, that works. Oh, it's no. a joke. <laughs> I shit. Thought- I do have, uh, I don't, this is not necessarily my favourite joke oh my ever. God. No, but... I need to still have time <laughs> to still... absorb the other. So come back to me next Credit week to, when I've coped. Uh, <laughs> Justin Ma is the person who told me this of FTL and Into the Breach fame. Hmm. Um, uh, I don't know if this is my favourite joke. It probably isn't, but I do like... <laughs> wow, burn. <laughs> uh, doctor, doctor, I can't pronounce my S, my T's or my H's. Well, I can't say further than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Oh, the other one that I really like um, is a knock-knock joke. So you start. Knock-knock. Who's there? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking. Pit Drocken from bright did red that with delight. It's like Indie K 2014, Drocken did that joke to me. Oh, and really? I fell for it then as well. Do you know, like, uh, Sean Murray told it to me. Which is, Probably got it from Drocken. tell you the state of the interview by that point. <laughs> I just, I love it so much. <laughs> Has anyone ever, like, come back to you, like, they have a knock knock joke prepared and they just <laughs> go right I, into it? I imagine that if you do it to children, they will, because they don't I mean, tend just to say, understand knock knock jokes anyway. They'll just be like, knock knock, who's their shoes? The fullback. Shoes who? And then they laugh. And like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> if I've been quick on my feet, I could have just said doctor, which is like the default one. Mm. That's true. <laughs> I just, I just love the confusion. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Chris, what's yours? I really don't think I have one. Or at least my mind's gone so blank that I don't <laughs> want to stay in this mind blank. <laughs> in that case, yeah, just play this for a clean up detail. Not yeah. just the question asker, everyone. <laughs> it's really good. I love it. Next question comes from Mitchell, who writes, Dear Unofficial Eve Gemo Fan Podcast. 
what's the best example of we're not so different, you and I? <laughs> Are any of them even any good at all? In that case, what is the best subversion of it that you've come across? My vote is for episode five of Tales from the Borderlands. There are also a couple of non-game instances that are good too, like when the hero says it to the villain in order to show empathy for them and talk them down. Thanks for reading, Mitchell. Uh, I think I gave Half Life Two too much credit for this at the time, uh, but it has a it straight up has a we're not so different, you and I. Breen literally says that to you. Um, but as he was saying it, I was using the gravity gun to rip the video screen off the the wall, <laughs> and it's a very physics-y interaction. And as soon as it breaks and the connection breaks, the screen turns off and he shuts up. And I was so satisfied with that. I was like, oh, at last, when mm. someone's saying the shitty line to me, I can just interrupt them. And at the time, I was like, oh, Half-Life 2 is genius, and this is one of the reasons it's genius. Actually, I think Half-Life 2, like, that's just a bad line, and it shouldn't yeah. be in the game. But it was good that I could interrupt it. I think the reason it's a bad line is because, you know, villains and heroes mirroring each other in some ways is fine. Um... But I think any writing where you literally just say the Tell theme. Them, yeah, like, <laughs> like, hey, did you notice these two things? Yeah, as well? yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> you know, because it doesn't get to what that means. It's just, you know, what does it, what does it mean if we're not so different? Because if, if you're the evil despot ruling over City 17 and I'm a man fucking about with a gravity gun. Yeah. In what way is it important that we were Even, both scientists? He actually has a better line of reasoning, which is at some point he says, uh, you know, you've destroyed so much, but what have you created? Which is a, a better, like, zing yeah. for a protagonist of a video yeah, game. I mean, you destroyed the video screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now. Like, just now. I don't know. <laughs> like, imagine if you did that and then he phoned. <laughs> which is like, as I was saying. <laughs> Look, I created this call. <laughs> Oh, God. So I'm intrigued that Tales of Borderlands has a subversion of this. Now I really want to get mm. that far because I want to see anyone take the piss out of this. I remember a great story about the development of Tales of the Borderlands um, where the script said that uh, the main character, uh, as they're running by video screen, they flip it off, meaning they turn it off. And the animators did not understand <laughs> yeah. the sense of that word. And I've so they, clip, they yeah. animated uh, the main character just doing like... Uh, just flipping the bird at the camera with both <laughs> hands as they run past, <laughs> which lo- looks amazing. And the writers liked it so much they just kept it. <laughs> so that's what happens. Well, this is like with the with the Watchdogs trailer earlier. It's not obviously quite the same, but you know, it starts off with um, the government's fucked off. But in <laughs> in British slang, that could mean the government's gone away, or it also could just mean the government's having a Mardi. Yeah. Day. You yeah. Know, like the government's furious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm re- fucked off. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to think of. I am trying to think of another subversion of we're not so different, you and I. Is there anyone who just says like, we're really different, you and I? God, My so God, you Jesus seem to be Christ. totally on the side of saving people, and I'm just like fucking them up. Like I don't understand you at all. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's probably true for like Mario and Bowser, right? <laughs> like, you're a turtle dinosaur, and that you're a small middle aged man. Like, <laughs> no, we have nothing in common. They both fancy Peach. Uh, apart from the love of this woman. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. Bowser <laughs> has a, a, what is it, a vocational training thing in plumbing. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I just, I choose not to use my license. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could go down this pipe, so I just don't think I should. <laughs> it's just not safe. I suppose Bioshock's got a bit of a, kind of earns its, We're not so, you're not so different, you and I. Because it's literally true. <laughs> uh, so does Bioshock Infinite. Yep. Definitely earns its We're Not So Different, You and I. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's not really a subversion so much as it is um, just literally true rather <laughs> than um, being a sort of broader thematic ham-fisted thing. Um, hmm. Trying to think. I would like it to be a proper, just full on visual pun. I feel like something like jazz punk could like mm. pull that off and it'd just be <laughs> like pointing to a sheep and a giant eyeball. It's like, they're not so different. <laughs> you <Wow>. and I. <laughs> I think, um, mass- you and I now in circle again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mass Effect tries to do this because um, that's kind of the, the elusive man's whole argument is like, we're basically <laughs> the same. It's like, we're completely different. You're like a chain-smoking Martin Sheen in a space chair. <laughs> and I'm a omnidirectional dad figure. <laughs> oh, shit, we are the same. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't remember that part at all. 
Well, Didn't been... he have like a roller skating delivery boy or whatever? Is as... <laughs> <laughs> <The fuck>? no. <laughs> like... <laughs> no, like Clang or whatever his name was. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Mass Effect character, Clang, the roller skating delivery boy. <laughs> is he not a person in the game? Like... No. Do you... Oh God, I know what you mean. You mean Kai Leng. Maybe. The, assa- <laughs> the, the, the Cerberus assassin in Mass Effect 3. You have to me- mean that. You, yeah, I mean, the, I, is he on roller skates? I, no, but I think he might have like, I think oh, he might legs? have prosthetic legs. Okay. Like, but there's no way you didn't get to clang from Kai Leng. I wouldn't believe it. Like. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it must be. <laughs> but he's that guy's friend, right? This particular personality type too, he'd be very mad to know that you remembered him as the roller skating delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good, that, that'd be the that'd be ultimate fucking burn the elusive man turns to you he's like you're not so different you and Clang the roller skating delivery boy <laughs> oh no I was just thinking this, like, I don't hey. have I don't have a friend who's a roller skating delivery boy like that was my point with all of this but then neither does he so maybe we aren't so different he and I <laughs> so- <laughs> neither of us know this fictional character Clang <laughs> Another thing me and the shark have in common. <laughs> oh. Uh, he's, he's just like a shark. He just has to keep delivering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you always get there. I always know exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. <laughs> See, it can't be that far off. Uh, that's, the, that's the problem, really. <laughs> like, it's never complete madness. It's just... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best I could have hoped for from that interaction. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we answer another it, question? Sure. Anyone? Any, <laughs> we're not so different, you and I, Pip. <laughs> you know, we're extremely different. Uh, yeah. Opposites. <sighs> not going to that. Uh, our final question for this week comes from Jim, who writes. Uh, Dear Crate and Melee Takedown Tool, I was recently reading about non-lethal playthroughs of Cyberpunk 2077 when I had a thought about how much how how such games depict non-lethal takedowns and stealth. In most stealth games, the non-lethal approach isn't really non-lethal. In reality, anyone you strangle so much that they permanently stop moving has been strangled to death. <laughs> However, if you look at people who are trying not to kill anyone in real life, like the police should be, they normally do this while being very, very loud. The stealthy spec ops teams you never hear of presumably do this by murdering everyone they meet. Do you reckon that an immersive sim could incorporate the standard non-lethal playthrough, uh, being one that was about as subtle as a riot police unit? Obviously, dedicated stealthers could just do a no-harm ghost playthrough, but it could be interesting to have non-lethal takedowns mean leaving conscious definitely not dead people shouting about how a man in a trench coat just broke both their arms and tied them to a lamppost thanks for reading heavy body jim (laughs) yeah it's an interesting point the like uh stealth and non-lethality are often often go hand in hand in immersive sims is like this is the ideal is you don't want to kill anybody and you also don't want to be seen but it's true most things (laughs) that <laughs> don't kill people are louder than things that do kill people. Um, yeah, right. Well, because there's such a wide range. It, it All it means is you didn't kill someone. <laughs> yeah. Whereas stealth is like, it was quiet. <laughs> there's, I mean, Deus Ex Human Revolution uh, has a go at this where like people who you only knock out can be revived by their friends. Mm. And so it's a liability. You are leaving people around who, who will alert other people. And so it's harder to do it in lately. SWAT 4 has... Uh, it does have loud ways of taking people out, um, non-lethally. It also has like a, like a paintball gun that, where the pellets are full of a gas that knocks people out, which I assume is based on some kind of real thing. I don't know how loud or quiet that is. Like the gun itself is quiet because it's mm-hmm. just firing some paintballs, but I assume the person choking on it is not <laughs> that quiet. <laughs> also the person shouting, did a fucking ball just come here and it's full of, oh god! <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. I think something that um, this question made me think of uh, a couple of moments from the 
from the watchdogs uh footage from earlier um because one of the things that i did like uh was the the older lady animations mm. and they felt a lot truer to how actual humans fight like <laughs> there's a moment where she is i think she's bringing her like maybe her gun or something down on someone quite hard but she also sort of f- falls as they fall mm. like there's a kind of a stumble in there that felt m- more true to mm. you know it's it's kind of like how um, it's very much played for for laughs obviously but in um the first bridget jones film where um <laughs> colin firth and hugh grant are fighting outside the pub but it's like it's that thing of like how actual how humans messy it is. fight <laughs> where they're sort of like trying to like poke you Grappling with their toe and... or like kick out or like, you know like pull hair or you know that kind yeah. of that kind of thing and i think that there's I wonder if it's actually just a lot harder to do because there's more physicality and more variation in the movements that you would use. Whereas, yeah. you know, taking someone out with a gun from from I mean, short distance doesn't involve how to have fingers tangled in hair or <laughs> biting or, you know, that kind of... The new Watch Dogs obviously has tasers and that seems to be a common way of non-lethaling somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting because... Uh, one of the weird things about Watch Dogs 2 is that uh, your melee weapon is like a pool ball in like a sling kind of thing that you just <laughs> fucking whack people with. Sneaker ball in a sock. Yeah. And it kills them. It straight up kills them. There's no concept of yeah. non-lethal in that game. There's just people are dead or alive. And if you do that to them, they're dead. <laughs> and this yeah. uh, Legion is not like that. Uh, it matters whether people are dead or alive. And Is it- Snooker Loopy a circle? <laughs> <laughs> An honourable mention. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I can hell, there are a surprising number of these combos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Polly Pocket would be one as well. A pocket mm, yeah, mm. <laughs> opening, isn't it? I guess so. You're getting stretching it here a bit. Anyway, Tom, if you sorry. stretch a pocket, it becomes yeah. more circular. Um, yeah, now it matters uh, because a, if you want to recruit them, they need to be alive for you to do that, <laughs> um, and b, if you do kill them, they're like everyone has friends and relatives in in the world. Like it's simulated in that way, and those people will hate you now because, or well, they'll hate DeadSec, and DeadSec is kind of you. <laughs> yeah, right. I think um, it's interesting because, like, I think the the thing that's difficult about this is. I think having more interesting approaches to not directly engaging with people is the answer to this. Cause mm. like, you know, the, the question of how do you do violence to people in a way that doesn't uh, kill them and, you know, is loud or isn't loud. Like whenever you hurt another human being, there's a chance that you hurt them more than you're expecting to, yeah. or that they die anyway, or, you know, that, like, it's the old thing that can happen in Dishonored 1 where you, like, leave an unconscious body to get eaten by rats, right? Like... Or slides down a three centimeter <laughs> step <laughs> and is immediately yeah. killed. Yeah, right. And, uh, but that stuff's actually, like, obviously that particular thing isn't realistic, but that idea of, like, as soon as you've, you know, like, if you knock someone unconscious and leave them in a bin, like, they they may get ill and die. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, there's no guaranteed non-lethal takedown. And in fact, even police, uh, they, they don't have non-lethal weapons. They have less lethal weapons. Yeah, right. That's right. the term they use. Yeah, people get killed by rubber bullets. It's, it's you know, it's yeah. a thing. Like, and so that, that whole side of things isn't necessarily, like, that desirable for games because, you know, in order to do non-lethal, um, to do it properly, quote-unquote, you need to allow for the kind of vast variety of things that can happen and go right and wrong in a human body on, you know, and so, you know, and that accounts for everything from people who are seriously injured by something that wasn't supposed to seriously injure them all the way up to people who recover quickly from something that was supposed to subdue them for quite a long time. Like, and all of that stuff would be frustrating in a game. If some guard, (laughs) guard gets lucky because of, you know, uh, you know, the way they were hit and wakes up a few minutes later and then starts yelling and, and sounding the alarm. I wonder if they would ever make a John Wick game. Well, they are. Like Bethel is. Bethel is. Oh, is he? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. I should but that's, check the internet. You know, and, and that's, and that's the thing. Like, one of the things that's kind of interesting about the, the choreography of those mm-hmm. movies is they're all about, like, 
the John Wick films have no problem with, you know, subdued guards waking up because everybody gets shot in the head. Yep. <laughs> everybody gets shot in the head. And so, and that's part of its rhythm as a, you know, choreographed action spectacle thing. Um, but it's also weirdly quite video gamey because John Wick is set in a universe where, you know, people are in a binary state, dead or alive all the time. Yep. And that's how most games prefer them. So I wonder if like, I would, I would almost prefer to have more robust options, uh, more sophisticated AI, more robust options for doing the things that actually do make it possible to achieve your spy goals or whatever it is that you're there to do while not hurting people. Because the chances are that the way you steal a file from a police station while not hurting people is setting off the fire alarm or switching off the power or locking people in a room or, you know, any of these things that, you know, don't, don't do violence to them physically. And like those, those options are often there, but they're often quite, um, quite, uh, scripted or, or kind of prescriptive in a, in a hitman or a Deus Ex. It's like, if I do this particular distraction, this person will run to this point, which will allow me to drop a chandelier on them. Usually, no I was going to say those things are usually part of a more elaborate Rube Goldberg thing. They're still yeah. not, they don't feel quite the, the thing that it's not quite the spirit of the question, which obviously I, you know, if I, well, no, but that's what I mean is if you detach them, if you just make it systemic and detach it from the kind of Goldberg thing, then it is the spirit of the question. Cause it's like, there's a, there's a distinction between a ghost playthrough where you were never seen and a non-lethal playthrough where you leave everyone alive, but you may, it's maybe not the cleanest thing in the world. But that's, um, so the thing that I was thinking was that games, yeah, it, it I, I would like, as well games to have more of that middle ground because it feels a lot like the options are essentially to it it feels like games know that a sort of a solution that maybe you would genuinely try in the real world like locking a door or just you know taking a thing and running or you know setting off an alarm um would be a one thing um a, a one action solution and i think that in trying to make it interesting they often end up in that rube goldberg territory or like oh, right, it's more mean. more moving parts so it's kind of i would be interested to see people um uh wrestling with with that space um which uh but but the reason that i was thinking about uh john wick was that even though it's it not non-lethal it's it, it does at least do an interesting um from what you've said anyway i can't watch the films um taking into account the actual physicality of bodies yeah it does and yeah. and that's a thing that games are obviously peculiarly bad at you either have people that feel like they you know there's there's a an instant off switch or, you know, it's, I, I don't know, like, because people, human bodies are both incredibly fragile and also incredibly robust. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, the idea that you could actually easily break someone's arm, I don't think a lot of people could. Like, you might be able to do it yeah, by no, accident. Yeah, you know, it, consistently or, yeah. But yeah, and so it's kind of like, there's an interesting, I think, um, duality there that i think game systems maybe uh, aren't well, i think we've cope. i think we've said it on the podcast before that games are pretty reluctant to show pain mm. like ga- games show violence but they don't often show like someone just being really badly hurt by you know what i mean like there's mm. you know when you then this gets into horrible territory but like if you are a tom clancy man whichever flavor of tom clancy man you are and you sneak up behind the guard in the emp facility that you're infiltrating probably and you snap the neck or, or stab them, that always works. Mm. You know, there's no, there's no variant of that where it, it maims them. And people tend not to be maimed. They tend to be either killed or, you know, health bars. Similarly, it's like people are mostly okay and then they're dead. Mm. And like, so, you know, games tend not to simulate for good reason, the other stuff, because it's distasteful because people find it distressing. And so, you know, where you, but often those things are going to be the best ways to n- n- quote unquote non-lethally incapacitate somebody. Mm. I think you get into like the messy truth of violence with this stuff, which is why games don't do it, to be honest. 
which is why like you have your magic tranquilizer dart that always works i think that's yeah maybe the the (coughs) point that i was ambling towards and which kind of crystallized while you were making those points it's interesting is um that in order to be more interesting at non-lethal stuff games would have to actually acknowledge the uh, bodies in a way Mm. that they don't they sort of refuse bodies bodies are just sort of um just digital shells it like it, it to be convincing and engage with non-lethality, I think it would need to actually sort of fundamentally reimagine how game engines and uh, developers tend to treat the body as an object or as a as a, a mm. anything in their game. Like even you know to the point where um, obviously a lot of uh, first-person stuff, you know, you look down and you don't actually have a body, right? Like yeah, the right. bodies are hard and weird and. <laughs> Smell funny. Um, <laughs> sorry. That I think was, that's changed in a lot of first-person games. Now. I think that, that has, that yeah. feels like that's changed, but yeah. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Like, yeah. There's a, there's an interesting non-presence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That is all of the questions we've got time for this evening. If you would like to send us a question for a future episode of the podcast, you could do so by emailing us at questions at creatingcrowbar.com. You can find us on Twitter at Crate and Crowbar. Our website, CrateandCrowbar.com, is where you'll find a link to our Discord, which you should check out. And um, as ever, thank you to our Patreon backers for making podcast do. Find out more <laughs> about podcasts and Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Crate and Crowbar. Finally, if you would like to follow us on Twitter as individuals, you may, you may. <laughs> I'm at C. Thurston, that's C-T-H-U-R-S-T-E-N. Tom? I'm at Pentadact, P-E-N-T-A-D-A-C-T. And I am at Philippa War, which is P-H-I-L-I-P-P-A-W-A double R. Nailed it. <laughs> Alex to shame. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Thank for you. listening, everybody. everybody.